Hi, this is Philip at the best 3D.com with Project Dog Waffle. And uh, in this segment, I want to show you some of the many types of brushes. Uh, this is a very brush centric program. And um, there have been some recent additions, and uh, every once in a while I get this question as to why does this don't work, doesn't work, or how, how come I'm doing, you know, some, some things don't behave the same way in certain brushes than in other brushes. So I'd like to uh, kind of cover what types of brushes we have here. Um, if you look at the brush tool here in the tool palette, and you might have it as a single or as a dual uh, panel, um, there is two column layout, right? So when you look at this brush, you can right click on that, and there's a lot of built in brushes. Now, even those can be in two different types. They can be an internal brush or they can be a custom brush. Um, so there's a couple of different types. Uh, let's, let's write them down as we go. So we have, uh, let's go to the tool, the text tool here, and say we have uh, internal brushes, and then we have custom brushes. That's a pretty small text, so let's resize this a little bit. Uh, let's choose a different font. Um, let's make it a little bit bigger. There you go. Alright, so we've got internal and custom brushes. Internal is something we use to describe uh, fairly small brushes. And when you look at, uh, let's see, the, the preset here, you right click on that. Most of these are internal brushes, not all of them are. Yeah, one thing you can see if they're small, they'll be they'll have some sort of a name like a single dot or small, medium, large, uh, and then beyond that, like here with the airbrush, I think this one here is the default brush. So if you choose this, you'll you'll have this airbrush, and you can choose different colors and all that, right? Um, but if you look at the airbrushes, there's also others, and some of them are brush 50. That's a 50 pixel image that it carries, and uh, 75, 100, 200. So when you s choose something like that, like the, the 200, and you go with blue, single dab will give you a little blue uh, stop, spot here, and you can click it again, or you can drag it around. Um, you can also change the step distance. There's a couple of other parameters here, the size and so on. Um, some of these will not respond to the change in size and that's because like in this case I've chosen a, a brush that's a custom brush and uh, custom brushes can be very very large and if you're on a sl slow system we wouldn't want that to slow you down too much to have to uh, resize it on the fly what you can do instead is to resize it right here uh, by resampling it you'll basically say uh, let's let's go to a smaller size you see a rubber band box in the upper left corner here uh, as you change the slider and and that allows you to resize it once and be done with it so it doesn't take too much time uh, to figure it um, but what if you want to resize it on the fly like for instance as part of the uh, pressure on your um, on your tablet so um, for that you actually have an option to have it go through it but you have to go to the brush settings right here and you'll see the custom option in which you can say allow custom brush transforms. When you check this, it will allow the uh, transforms like rescaling or rotation to occur. So there's a, a couple of main parameters here and those will affect uh, your regular brushes or internal brushes that are relatively small. Some of these will not. Like the scale, uh, the speed scale will only affect uh, custom brushes if you actually allow custom brushes to be transformed. All right, so again, this goes back to the idea that uh, on slow systems, on slow computers, you don't want to waste too much time in recalculating a, a resampled or rescaled or rotated image on the fly every time, every time that the dab is going down. But when you are on a fast system, it doesn't matter. So you go and enable it, and or if you are, um, if you have a relatively small custom brush image, it might work too. So. You have the option, we leave that up to the end user to decide if you are on a fast or slow system. Um, so essentially we have custom brushes that are internal, relatively small, I think up to 32 by 32 uh, pixels roughly. And you can see them here, the shapes. Okay, these are brush images and shapes you can pick. And so if you, if you take the flowers, for instance, here, you can do a single dab of flower right there. Oh, no, I'm actually on a very small size here. See, that one does respond to the size. So let's go to full size and uh, undo a couple of these earlier dabs. I'm going to go back to plain white. Uh, so you can go and let's see, here's a speed, speed scale that also threw me off here. Let's go back to zero. Actually, there's a quick way to reset everything. I think if you, if you hit escape, 
um, it resets all the parameters here. Um, so <clears throat> what you have here now is the full size, 32 by 32 pixels or 31 maybe, something around there. And whichever shape you choose, uh, you'll see that particular shape in there, right? So um, you can, these are the internal brushes. These are relatively small internal brushes. Uh, custom brushes are larger and need additional options, but the internal brushes, um, they'll, you'll be able to have the tablets change the size based on the pressure uh, or even follow the angle um, and, and have them rotate based on that, um, something like this here. Well, it's difficult to see unless you increase the step distance a little bit. <laughs> and um, you can also change all right, so so these are brush sets for internal brushes, right? Some some relatively small, fast brushes to use in many different ways. All right, so the next thing is custom brushes, and so actually, when you look at the brush settings here, um, the brush settings uh, or uh, brush options is a shortcut O for options on that one. Um, when you go there, you have the the internal brushes right here there's a tooltip that will give you that uh, there's also custom brushes here and so you actually have these brushes loaded and ready to go and use uh, on moment's notice you can switch to this one and immediately uses that or you can switch to this one and immediately uses this so you can have uh, this brush in the in the internal brush and you can still have the custom brush with the big uh, fluffy thing there at the same time. You also have a third one which is called the anti-aliased pen. This one is a, is a neat pen, is a, is a good brush to use when you, you don't need a, a very fast, uh, you don't need a, a very precise uh, shape and you just want to have a, a very good quality anti-aliased drawing, line drawing tool. Right. So. Um, that one, the anti-aliased anti -alias, um, algorithmic pen. Let's go and erase everything here and add that to the, the brush. So um, what do we call that anti-aliased algorithmic pen, right? So uh, algo anti-aliased pen. Um, this, this is important to realize is that, oops, uh, let me go redo that. Uh, there we go. Let's make this a little bit bigger so it fits. And there you go. All right, so we have internal brushes, relatively small, custom brushes, pretty much any size. They can even be much bigger than your canvas on which you're painting. So you can have very large images that you load into your brush and stamp them down or bra drag them around in an animation and so on. Uh, and then you have the algorithmic anti-aliased pen. So those are the main brushes, if you want to call that, the ones that you can access directly here from the brush settings. And in fact, when it comes to custom brushes, there's a whole set of tools down here that let you create custom brushes uh, in many other ways as well. Like here's the, the FX brush. And with the FX brush, you have all sorts of special effects, lights, and, and other tools that you can create. Um, and with that, you can you can paint with those. So these are custom brushes. A custom brush you can also access here uh, and manage in the brush menu. That's uh, really mostly for the custom brushes here. Uh, you can store it, and you can uh, change the size. You can uh, change the hue, saturation value, and so on. You can also look at it and see if it's a film strip. So that goes into another category, and that's if you have multiple images inside your custom brush. So a custom brush can actually be more than just one image that you stamp down. It can be a sequence of brushes or a sequence of images. If you look at the browse media option here, you'll probably find some of those that are custom brushes that are animated. Not really sure which ones to pick here. Let's see if that one is. Well, that one might be, but but uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be. It could be just a function of what direction. It may just choose the angle based on which way you're painting. So, um, you know, one way to determine whether to see if it's a custom brush is you you store it to manage it, and then you open the film strip. Well, now see this one is only one brush image. So that's not a custom brush with. I mean, it is a custom brush, but not with the animation in it. Um, so you'll want to explore those to see the patterns, to see a couple of other tools that you can use uh, to, to paint with, right? Um, and of course, the, the, the brush here and the, the brush pickup tool. Uh, you know, if you have anything like here on the canvas, the pen, P-E-N, if you want to pick that up as a brush, you just use this here. This tool here um, is the custom brush pickup tool. And so you go and select this area, 
And there you go. So now you've essentially identified what you want in your brush and you can go store that, um, store and manage it. And there you go, you see it. And you can also see a little bit of white around um, the, the red and maybe you need to right click your brush tool to, uh, to indicate what part is transparent, right? That's the color keying. So if you go on the white and you select uh, a little bit more stringent uh, low clip high, cl high pass uh, values, you'll get a nice uh, brush in there and it can now be subject to rotation because we have the allow custom brush transforms uh, checked here. If we uncheck this it's not going to uh, to transform it. So you can see you can click it where you want. You can also use a preview here. Uh, PRV will preview it. If it's a custom brush it will show you where it's about to go. When you click it down that's where it will go and there it is. Um, so the allowing the custom brush transforms allows you to actually do certain things like changing the size, changing the angle based on a randomness perhaps, a random position. Well random position doesn't take much time so that's happening even if you don't enable the custom brush uh, allowing checkbox here. But uh, the random size and also the random angle those will only happen if you actually allow the custom brush to be transformed. If you don't, it will have the random position and it can also do random hue. Um, although that requires that the custom brush be not treated as color but as a mat. So it, it uses the information as a mat and then the color of the brush can change based on the random hue. Uh, all of these brushes that I've shown you here um, are essentially image based. You have an image, you can even create one yourself right here in the custom brush tool here in the custom, the custom tab you can create a brush of a particular size. You can also do other things like uh, the cell size, identify uh, the cell density and that will allow you to, to make brushes of uh, yet another very complex shape uh, and appearance. So, But still these are images and you can store them in order to better manage them and they're treated in this case as a mat but you could also actually use the color as it is and so <clears throat> other than these what type of brushes do we have uh, dog waffle has image brushes as we've seen small images are called internal brushes and then there's also custom brushes uh, and then there is an anti-aliased uh, algorithmic pen. This one's an algorithm generating that blobby thing as you're drawing. Um, so now there are other type of brushes. So we've seen the main brushes and, and many of them here in the browse media, in, in the media browser where you'll see those, many of these are custom brushes. Um, you see for instance the eye, um, those are images uh, or single images and then there is a lot of other types. The grime probably same thing here. The moment you see the preview it's probably a custom brush that you can uh, you can load and use. And and then there's many other types. Uh, here's a couple more. <clears throat> Alright so some of these brushes were actually created with other brushes initially and then picked up as images. So that's that's a very common technique is that you, you eventually work with image based brushes um, but you may have started them in some other types of brushes and I want to show you now some of the others like here's a seaweed right this one's an image and it's a it's a fairly large image that was created with the particle brushes initially and then picked up as a custom brush and now it's also subject to further transforms uh, random uh, rotation random hue all sorts of parameters that are in those settings when you click here on settings you may see um, random position, size, angles and so on. So all of these parameters uh, can affect an image uh, no matter how large that image is and you may want to see here also if you again store it, brush, uh, this one is only a single image but when you paint it it can appear m in many different ways because of the random size, uh, angle, hue, uh, rotation and so on. All right, so but I, I indicated that this brush was created initially probably from a custom brush, which uh, uh, from a from a particle brush, and so that leads us into another type, another category of brushes. Um, what we have here is particles. When you look at that, you have particle brushes of three different types. Right, we have the particles, and when you enable that, the shooting particles, well, basically right out of the mouse and then uh, gravity holds it or the speed at which they fly holds it and you can adjust, you can adjust those, right? You can go to the 
initial velocity and say that should be a little bit larger and now you see that uh, shoot out a little bit in all directions but gravity is still holding it down and uh, you see that down here if you give it a negative gravity it's going to go upwards it's going to go the other direction right and then you have a couple of other ways to to work with these you have uh, the gradients you can make them look at uh, different colors you can have them um, contain like shrinking lines so they have an initial size you can set and then they are a little bit thicker right you can also give them some random uh, value here to, to randomize some of these parameters so there's a little bit more randomness to that to their appearance and all of these parameters again you can save and store and you can do that right here you can later on load them and so there's a whole preset a collection of presets uh, but you can totally customize those and save them and under different names to create more serious grass or more pine branches so for instance here's a pine branch preset and let's say we wanted that to be a little bit more thick elements, thick needles. So instead of lines, you might want to change uh, this to shrinking lines and change the thickness of these. So now you have a more prickly appearance on those, right? And you can even uh, perhaps make them really fat and uh, perhaps even shorter lifespan. Let's say 11 instead of 20. So now it looks a little bit more like a cactus element there, right? Um, so there's lots of presets here for this. You can find, for instance, uh, some presets for winter branches. And again, these uh, maybe they look a little bit too mathematically predictable. You know, the, the angle, the split is always the same. Uh, maybe you want to randomize, randomize that a little bit. And when you do, you'll see a little bit more of a natural appearance on that. Uh, let's say you go back to some of the grasses here. You have baddie grass, one of my favorites for bad grass, tufts. And you just drag the mouse around here and it shoots the particles right out of the mouse and uh, changes uh, things like the gravity, pulling it down. Uh, there's all sorts of other parameters. You can have a force field, you can have fog, you can have some other parameters, age decrement. Uh, invite you to experiment with those. It's 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 quite addictive. <laughs> all right. Uh, so that brings us to the next category: the bristle brushes. Now, when you enable those, <clears throat> you'll probably want to use a tablet, but you don't have to. But it, it works even better with a tablet. I don't have one here with me, so I'm going to see what I can do with the mouse. Uh, these are basically bristle brushes. We've had these for uh, quite a number of years, and basically what the, they allow you to do is bristle around here as if it was still a wet paint and <coughs> and, and modify it, right? So that you can. This is something that you'll use typically if you have a photograph and you want to modify this thing to make it look a little bit different, maybe more of a painterly appearance. Because after that, you can also go to the filters and perhaps give it a, a convolution or an embossing look, and uh, that will make it look like even more thick or, or, or you know heavy uh, paint. Uh, so those are the bristle brushes, and there's all sorts of controls you can use here to change uh, in which direction these bristles appear, what size they are, how much they bleed with the color or produce their own paint color. Uh, you know, if you go to 100%, you don't see any color addition. It's just taking the current bleed and the current color and modify that. But you have some presets here to play with and experiment with. And again, tons of parameters to indicate how you want that bristle to actually modify the current image. Um, and then here there's a new one. That's a category called orbitals or orbiting particles. And so basically what we do with those, um, let me go and clear the image so we can see that. Um, we, we have a swarm of particles and you see that right here, maybe in a sphere. So uh, let me go make that a little bit bigger, maybe uh, 123. So you have here, you see a, a, a swarm of, of dots. These, these points are swarming around in a sphere. Not just in a circle, but actually in a three-dimensional sphere. Uh, there we have it in a cube, and there we have it inside a plane. And the plane itself is orbiting, it's rotating too. Uh, and so there's a, a variety of uh, layouts, and these are all in 3D spaces. And as you're painting, whoa, this is going fast. Maybe we don't need that many. Let's reduce the number of bristles to very few. These are just three at first. Um, so what you'll see here, and let me get a dark color. What you see here is that they, these or particles are actually orbiting inside, um, you know, a three-dimensional confined space, and and that gives you uh, additional very sophisticated uh, shapes uh, that would be kind of difficult to to create manually. Uh, so let's say I'm going to create perhaps a little bit more. Let's say 12, 
and and then you can also change uh, some of the other parameters here the, the brush size uh, all sorts of others um, let's see what else we got here brush size uh, minimum size you see down here the, the color bleed so again this can be used also to to modify uh, very drastically an existing image so if I go back to uh, something like what was that initial image I had the original there let's see if it can go back to those there you go alright so I got this image here and I'm just painting over it but this time you can tell I think let me go yeah I think you can tell quite easily if I set the brush size a bit bigger it's rotating it's these particles are dragging the pixels around kind of in a circular way that's because these particles are orbiting inside the cube or inside the sphere and the, it creates a sort of a vortex appearance there. All right, so that's yet another uh, technique and other type of brush. So we've seen a couple of different brushes. We've seen uh, custom brushes that are internal. Uh, we have internal brushes, and we have custom brushes, and then we have uh, an anti-aliased algorithmic pen, and then we have particle brushes of different categories: the regular particle brushes, the bristles, and the orbitals. All right, now, so that's basically it. The, these are brushes, and they can be used to create very different types of things. I mean, they can have, um, here we go, for instance, if we, if we disable the particles and go back to our regular brushes, we have this one here. Uh, this pen is a custom brush with just one single image. But we can easily create animated custom brushes, and we have a couple actually here somewhere. If you look at the favorites, um, well, some of these are not really animated, but they are custom brushes nonetheless. Um, let's see if we can go and select some of these with the flowers, the hot dog. Some of these. There, this one is a rotating one as far as I know. If I remember, I created this with a rotating element, a doily that I rotated. So if, if you look at this on the custom brush, you store it. And then you can go and look at the film strip, and sure enough, there's more than one image in it. There's actually probably about seven or ten or something like that, even more. It could be it could be an AVI file. I mean, that's one thing about this uh, program is that it's not just images. Even if you have the artist edition, which doesn't allow you to create animations, you can still create animated brushes. And you can actually go to the brush menu and look under animated brush and find that you can load uh, an AVI file, you can animate a brush timeline, there's a, there's a variety of options here um, to, to work with these. You can load an AVI to an animated brush just the same way. So when you do that, uh, let's say we have an AVI, I don't know if you've seen some of these earlier ones. Here, here's something I created actually with a poser walk sequence and then I rendered that against the animated sky and I'm now going to take this back. This is a, a VI clip of 640 by 360 pixels and there's a total of 48 frames in it. And I'm going to load them all. I can actually choose if I only want some of them. All right, the first uh, 15 frames or so. But I'm going to take them all and they're all being loaded now into my custom brush. Right, and here's a quick reminder that before you mess with this and forget about it, you know, you may want to store it just so you have another copy, a safe copy of it, because you might forget it and then you might drop it. So here is basically another custom brush with uh, the poser walk sequence and this poser dude is running in front of a an alpha channel that has a couple of bars you can see that in some piece, places here he's disappearing but it, this is now a custom brush and this is a custom brush and this one's a custom brush this one's not animated there's only one image here um, and every time you click it it's the same image that's being stamped down you can preview it and you can see it right there uh, <clears throat> okay so that's this one that's a custom brush with just one image uh, this one is a custom brush with an animation in it. So every time you click it, it advances a little bit. You can see I click again and again and again, and it keeps rotating to the next frame, right? And then at the end, it cycles back to the first frame. So it, it and I made this one so that it doesn't look like it has a beginning or an end that look different. So it, it is cyclical and recyclable and loopable that way. So you can create uh, brushes that keep going on and on. And this is an animated brush. Uh, this is another animated brush. Just click that, and now you have this guy in my brush that I can paint down here and um, move him around wherever I want. Now, so far, I've been drawing only on a single image, right? This image in the background, I can zoom into it, I can pan it around. 
Uh, that image is a single brush, uh, excuse me, a single a canvas, a single image. Well, I can actually have multiple images. I can create an animation, right? And I'm going to create an animation here of the same size. This time I'm going to say clear it to the secondary color. And I can load, I can take the pen and paint, paint this in here paint this in here but it's only on the first frame if I go to the next frame it's not there anymore right so only the first frame got this well I can do the same thing with this I can go with this brush and paint it here or there and I can also uh, drag it around it's painting in this current frame what about painting across the other frames well I mean I could go to the next one and see that I can even enable the light table so I can see what the prior frames looked like and I can basically create a step frame animation that way right so so then I disable the light table and uh, can go back through the frames that I've painted but what if I wanted to actually paint my brush across the multiple frames automatically we can actually do that let me let me go and clear all these here and I can do that painstakingly slowly one frame at a time or I can right click here and say clear all frames right so all frames are now clear and what I'd like to do is paint this thing across the multiple frames easy all I gotta do is uh, let's see undo this quick all I gotta do is hold the alt key down when you press and hold the alt key down it's going to draw across the multiple frames of the animation and so you can draw and as you draw it's moving the frames in your brush but also moving across the frames in your animation so very quickly you're creating animations that uh, are a little bit more sophisticated and then let's say you enable mirror here's a mirror uh, let's do the vertical mirror okay so anything that you're drawing here on the top side is being mirrored on the bottom side and so you can <laughs> you can create some pretty wacky stuff with that. Let's do a mirror that has the uh, horizontal mirror as well. So now we have even more sophistication to that. Now let's say we wanted to turn this into a 3D animation. We have a, uh, a filter here in the in the transform filter category called 3D Designer. And with the 3D Designer, you can actually go and oh, hold on. Let's uh, let's go and uh, disable the preview of the brush and let's go back into the filter transform 3d designer and uh, have a look at it in perspective with the um, shading on and actually showing the image from the uh, the color from the image but let's disable the mirroring so we, we actually see the original that we already have here with the animation now i, I can look at this in in 3d i can uh pan it around Right. What I'd like to do is actually have a little animation around this now in 3D. But remember, this is going to be animated in and of itself. Still, I wanted to also animate. I want to like like fly around it like this from about this angle going around to this direction here, this side. So I'm going to go start here and click on animate, and I'm going to say, let's uh, change the the header. H, P, B, those are for the, the heading and the pitch and the bang. These three angles can be interpolated. I'm going to go with just one along the, the heading and no change on the others. Click on that. And so now it's taking this filter across the entire timeline and rendering, turning it into a 3D animation. And you see that right here. So we had the original animation of all these blobs and now we have a 3D version because it's basically taking the images we used to have and looking at it as elevation map and recreating the coloring on that. Anyway, so I hope this uh, clarifies some of the rather wacky options you have here in PD Pro. Uh, there is more than just a brush to it. There are many different types of brushes and uh, I encourage you to experiment with it and combine it with some 3D and other options because it's, it's pretty amazing what you can do with this. PD Pro uh, Howler is the version I'm using here with the animation support. PD Pro Artist does not have this animation menu and all the options in here, but it still has the custom animator brushes that you can see here. So if you use other tools to create an AVI file, you can load it right in here and paint with that. Alright, that was it. Thanks for watching.